Hi, Mahima. So glad Hi. to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, so, for all of you that are tuning in from the Basis Community, Mahima is the Chief Operating Officer of Coot Loot, which is an online, offline to online store that helps um, small retailers digitize their business. And what's really cool is if you have unused clothing in your closet, uh, clothing that has either a tag on it or you've worn it once. Um, and you know it's in mint condition. You can actually find a buyer for it on Kutu. Uh, very very excited to have you here, Mahima, and walk Thank us so through. Super excited. Yeah. And... yeah. Also love what Gigbasis <laughs> is doing with the the whole financial independence for women. And kudos to you guys. Thank you. No, it's a really important subject. And, uh, you know, all of us at Basis passionately believe in what we're doing. So it's great to have more and more women entrepreneurs and professionals and everybody else who really passionately believes that to join in as well. So Mahima, enough about Basis. We're going to actually chat about you and conclude in your journey. Yes. So first, I want to talk about, you know, how you studied engineering and then, yeah. you know, you worked at Nielsen for a little bit and then you decided, you know, I don't want this corporate life. Let me just start up with my friends. Uh, right. So why don't you walk me through that journey? So I think uh, it started when, you know, I was just going to finish engineering. And at that time, you're at this point in life when you need to figure out, figure out what's the next step. And can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, now I can hear you. Yeah. Cool. So I was figuring out what my next step was and I'm like super organized and you know, I do all my research and I'm like that kind of a person. So I had my plans ready. Like I'd given, I was going for my master's to the US, I'd done my GRE and given all the TOEFLs, everything was done and I would just sort of fly and you know, apply. But then I realized that I don't think this is what I want to do. And I don't think, I want to do something that I love, that I like, and not just, you know, do something that the entire herd community is doing. And I joined Nielsen as a market research analyst, which I absolutely yeah. love. I love data. I loved, you know, helping companies make decisions to be better and to, you know, grow their companies in terms of revenue, in terms of market share. And I think uh, that is when it struck me that this is something that I want to do. And I don't want to do yeah. it for somebody else's business. I want to do it for mine. I want to build something where I can help people and empower people, you know, to be better in their own lives. And I think you obviously know our co-founders really well. And uh, we sort of figured it out. And we had we figured the best way for us would be to solve our own problem. At that time, I think, you know, Facebook was going on. It was the whole Mark Zuckerberg story. And we were really fascinated yeah. because what they did was they use technology to solve a common problem, which I think we yep. realize is what we want to do. And we want to build it in India in a localized manner because that's obviously our strength. And we don't want to copy what the Westerners or the Chinese are doing. And uh, right. it made sense at that time when we created an opportunity for people to come on board. And, you know, we had a new stuff. We started as a secondhand fashion business. So uh, right. just me, which is my co-founders, his sister was getting married. And she had a whole lot of clothes that she wanted to throw off. And she lives in the US. So there they sell it off in Goodwill and, you know, XYZ. But we didn't have any platform in India like that. And that's what we built at Kootloot. And that's what's our, you know, starting journey. And I think going forward, we have pivoted our business depending upon what works and what doesn't work. And obviously scaling our business to make it more effective for the Indian community. So yeah, that's right. <laughs> No, but that's amazing. The premise is still the same, right? The premise is still, you know, Mahima, if you have something in your wardrobe that you have not used and you're definitely not going to use it for the next five years, but it's just lying there and I'm yeah. looking for clothes to buy and I really like your closet, I can just connect with you through this app and buy your closet. Yeah, that is basically how it began. And, you know, you can... You have so many unused clothes. You have branded clothes that don't fit you. You have electronics at home that don't you don't use. You have so many things. You can just sell them and make yeah. more money. It's so much more sustainable. 
and you know it's good yeah. for the economy yeah. it's good for the environment so it's like a win win yeah and in fact you know you started off with clothes and then you got into uh high end luxury items and you know it was surprising to see that you had even you know the jimmy choos once worn yeah. you know Christian Louboutin shoes. You had Louis Vuitton bags. All of that being sold. Even you know, uh, designer outfits, heavy outfits, sarees. You know, and then slowly you started adding adding categories, including menswear. Yeah. So I think the growth of the business started where we were concentrating on secondhand fashion, and we realized that there's also a niche market to it. I mean, there is ten percent of the population that can afford Louis Vuitton or can afford a Gucci or a Chanel bag, and uh, we don't have a reselling market, and that's why we created it for the niche. But we also created yeah. something for the masses. So everything was a built-in amalgamation of sorts. And right now we're at the business point where what we're trying to do is eighty percent of retail is still offline. That's the problem in India. We're a develop developing nation, and the next step is to go online. Right? We can't be offline mm -hmm. constantly. So you know, if you see other countries like the U.S., the China, and all the other developed countries, their major growth came when they started digital, when they went online. And that's you know our basic vision as a company. What we want to do is you know get twenty five million sellers on board, but in the next five wow. years, yeah. So big feat. Hope fingers crossed to do that. <laughs> no, you'll definitely achieve that target. Knowing you and your team, you're a passionate bunch of entrepreneurs, and you're like absolute go getters. Um, now, something else that people actually do not know about you that. Equally interesting is you are one of the rare few companies, uh, you know, based out of India, that successfully raised a pre-Series A and a Series A round in venture capital from China and Chinese investors directly, you know, and and that in itself is a massive milestone to achieve. So, you know, why don't you talk to us a little bit about that journey? Um, so when we started three years ago, um, it was obviously a very beta version of the app on the website. We were also on Shopify, and we were very lucky at that time to get a seed uh, fund from WeCats, which helped us grow at that time. And it happened very organically. WeCats is venture catalyst. For yeah, those, for catalyst. those who don't know, WeCats is venture catalyst. It's a really large network uh, for startup entrepreneurs to raise funding from. Yeah, and at that that time, I think they were also just beginning, and we were one of their few yeah. portfolio companies. So it's a growth that we started together, and we were very lucky to have investors on board, which you know helped us mentor because we were young at that time. We were very young; it was just like a crash course MBA, you know, this building this company. So at that time, yeah, we got lucky because we had investors which were mentoring us each step of the way, and you know, we knew the tech. But we wanted to learn more of the business side and the more of the finance side and the scalability side, and I think they yeah. introduced us organically to uh, some Chinese investors. And you know, the I think the key. I mean, it's obviously eighty percent hard work and twenty percent luck. But the right word would be product market fit. I mean, they liked us because we had a product which they believed in, and that's why they invested in us. obviously they believed us uh, in us as you know entrepreneurs but i think they believed in the concept and the product more they had seen a very similar company which is now one of the largest companies in china which is taobao which does the exact same business which is a unicorn and they thought this could be as big as them and the only way yeah. you know, they could enter the market would be through a company which would localize that model and that's what we basically you know did and got chinese investors and it's been a blessing and you know they bring so much more than just the capital they bring the technology they bring the you know the experience of running a mass economy seamlessly that's what they have and with a population like ours it's the best market fit for a company to get you know investment from chinese yeah and you know interestingly you know when you and i have been talking previously uh one of the learnings that i had was that you know china is obviously we're lagging behind in terms of technology you know but we are on a similar trajectory to china in terms of scaling up right and so you're really seeing you know the growth in india the way china saw it maybe you know 
15 to 20 years yeah. ago and where following that same trajectory the chinese actually bring with them experience of having built something similar 20 years ago and they build they bring that expertise but they also bring cutting edge technology that exists today you know right. and it's relevant from today to to the next 10 15 20 years so yeah, so I, what there we really bring I think our strength is Indians is our people. We have an amazing workforce. We're educated, we're very skilled, and you know when you combine that with the technology expertise and the mass management they bring in, it's a combination that you know blow out the world. You can see how Paytm has grown in India, and you know how yeah. to, how to capture demonetization and you know build their company like that. So yeah, it's easier for us because we have help from the Chinese definitely. right um now in terms of here going forward right what are your plans for kootloot uh, obviously covid has had a massive impact right and we can talk a little bit about covid as well but beyond covid you know where do you see kootloot scale so i'll be super honest to you uh when we were you know running the business and everything everything was hunky dory we were hitting the numbers we were hitting the sales the growth was exponential it was good for us and then covid happened but uh touch wood we were prepared for it because we uh one of our businesses within the kootloot you know diaspora is that we import uh chinese supply and provide supply to our sellers in india so that you know we provide supply to them so that they can in turn sell to their shops and retailers and so forth and so on now we already knew the covid how had it impacted the chinese so we were pretty much prepared and we had realized that we will have to pivot and or we will have to do something but what we didn't realize was that essentials in e-commerce would be stopped our business is fashion lifestyle and electronic retail and uh unfortunately fortunately the government made a decision to stop essentials in e-commerce now that obviously hit our yeah. business really hard yeah but uh, it also created opportunity it also created a uh, something wherein we realized we need to give back to the community we need to help the community we need to come together as a community and we need to provide essential services we need to provide fruits and vegetables we need to provide medicine we need to provide masks hand sanitizers anything that anybody wants at this particular point of time because we were lucky enough to have an operational base that could deliver that we were in pretty much pan india 14 cities working in terms of selling our logistics is pretty sorted so it was easy for us to you know transition but i think getting into more categories is a little daunting when you're working from home but uh, i think working from home is going to be the new normal now it has to be and uh, yeah. we're we're now actually in we're at a point where we used to have around 1000 retailers on board daily and because of the covid oh, wow. i mean we actually have we've actually grown uh, and we now have 3500 sellers that come online because now everyone oh, wants to come God. online yeah now everyone wants to come online everyone wants to sell online so it's actually become a really good and you know way to grow our business yeah that's really exciting but also challenging i mean obviously it's it's not an ideal situation for anybody to be in but that being yeah. said it it's amazing that you've managed to really find you know a, a silver lining in this entire you know to to find a new business opportunity um what you know what is interesting to me is now your ex- your expanding beyond fashion as different sort of product categories right so how do you see that mix changing going forward i think um you 80% of retail which is offline is fashion and lifestyle but we also have a lot of fmcg products we also have electronics which a lot of second hand shops are selling in india and i think uh, our mission or motto as a company is to build an app for the young people in india and what does a young yeah. person need he needs a mobile phone he needs clothes to wear yeah. he needs yeah right now he needs his essentials for sure and he needs some credit and cash a little bit of pocket money so that's the basic agenda in terms of what we're going to offer in terms of services but yeah we're going to grow into categories it's easier to grow into different categories if your operational base is really strong 
and i think that's what we're working on as a company we want to increase into more cities we want to actually instead of metros where the biggies and the big big b2b companies are basically in we want to enter into tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 cities because the next level of growth is going to be multi language it's not going to be in hindi and english it's going to be in different languages it's going to be of yeah. lower middle class and middle class people and that's where the growth is going to come from and i think the reliance and uh, facebook deal you know exemplifies yeah. that and it's it's basically like a proof of concept for us because that's what they want to do they want to bring the chinese wechat app into the whatsapp business and you know they want to do that and they want to do it for the tier 2 tier 3 communities so that's what we're trying to do we're trying to empower sellers to come online for the first time and yeah so i think the business will grow like that and i think the next wave of sellers the next wave of retailers smes is all going to come from the smaller cities in india and not the metros because i think the metros have saturated now wow so not only are you expanding product verticals beyond fashion into finance into you know essentials but now you're also looking at adding layers of languages and multiple different languages on top so in yeah. essence you're becoming what is called a super app <laughs> hope to be there <laughs> believe it yes definitely and how is work from home going for you you know obviously there must be certain uh functions within the organization that have to work from home there must be certain functions that have to work from office how are you managing this situation um so i think the cloud teams where in the technology the development and the customer care that's all very seamlessly come on to you know the work from home function because they already use laptops and mobiles and internet that's all they need they don't need people talking around them that's not what they need and i think work from home if done well does actually increase efficiency because we've seen it in our technology team uh, they've been on timelines and deadlines which doesn't happen with them very easily they've been and the products are pretty good without a lot of testing and they've launched it and they've been super fast because you know they had to build the essentials part of the business in a span of like 2 to 3 days and they were rock solid and it was so seamless and they were fast which i think did not happen as well when we were in office honestly so work from home for them is actually pretty great i think for some teams you know where in the operational side of the business comes here like you the logistics and uh you know the accounting and everything that obviously needs um you know on ground sort of a workforce but we're still trying to make that um, offline and uh, because the logistics in india is built in a way wherein you don't really need the operation workforce to come in every day so our concept is that if you know suppose you're selling the headphones that you're wearing and uh, apura clicks the picture of the headphones uploads it on the app the image recognition automatically detects what the category the color is so you don't have to type anything which is why it can be manipulated into different languages so, uh, so our ai does that and if a buyer see me wants to buy the headphones i'll come on kootloot order it and directly the product pick, gets picked up from your house and delivers it to me and you get the money in 72 hours so it's a pretty seamless business so even if we do do work from home as the new normal i think it'll be good for tech companies and i think we'll be okay i think our uh, tech infrastructure is pretty good not just for our company but i think for most of the indian startups that are there i think that's our strength the yeah. tech right and i think you know you're talking about things like image recognition which is you know it's it's fascinating that you're using all this really cutting edge technology which didn't exist yeah. even a, a few years ago and you're integrating that seamlessly to provide really you know quick easy solutions for the average indian user in say the tier 2 tier 3 term um yeah. so kudos to you on that thank um, you the last couple of things that i wanted to you know touch upon before we invite questions from our basis community how do you um how do you see financial independence for yourself and what goals have you set for yourself and what would you like to share with the basis community on your journey of financial independence so i'm a young indian millennial girl living in the most expensive city in india which is mumbai so i have my share set of expenses i'm sure you know bombay is not easy to live in and you know no, no. so we we do i mean 
I was very, you know, thankful that my parents, you know, instilled that sense of financial independence in me. I know a lot of women aren't, but I think the key to that is to get yourself educated, get yourself uh, extremely read up on things that you don't know about. Because now is not the time to sit at home and wait for someone to give you money. You gotta have, you gotta do it on your own. You need to go on the vacations that you pay for, buy your shopping trips. That's all gonna be on you. So I think uh, read up, get educated. and there are certain like tips and you know things that i have followed which i'd love to share is um create a budget for yourself like you know if xyz your uh, income is let's say 10000 rupees a month create a budget that you know use the 50 20 30 rule 50% goes to your expenses your rent and everything and then you know 30% is all your shopping needs your discretionary the fancy fiestas you want to do and 20% is your emergency fund so you have to save if you do not save and you don't have a pension it's going to be really problematic for you in life so i think save and um, the easiest way to do that you know honestly you know a lot of people don't know is to create a savings account indian banks give you 4% rate of interest on that so you just transfer it to a savings account get your 4% interest you're good to go for like 25 years have a pension and you can relax on your beach and everything and i think uh, yeah but you know yeah, we we can get into that later but you want to find <laughs> thing that hopefully beats inflation right not yeah. just park it in a low paying you know interest yeah Yeah, I think the next step for me was that after you start investing, you got to read up on things that are good for you. So I think for me, mutual funds was something that I um, specifically target, and uh, I think it, like forty percent of my income goes to savings in that, and it's a great way to save, especially uh, in the long run, because you have you earn around twenty five percent to twenty two percent rate of interest in a span of four to five years, which is not bad actually. You just have to park that money, and you know you can. gain interest in that the other thing i think would be to get into the um, the services that the government provides a lot of fixed deposits put in your money in saving schemes get your pf fund a lot of st- companies don't have pfs but you can a lot of people don't know that you can create your own pf account so you can go to your bank and you say create my own yep. pf account yep. doesn't necessarily need to be like from the company that you work with because small companies don't need to do that right so if a lot of people yeah. are working in small companies they can get their pfs done and uh, i think the next thing would be to be a part of a community i realized like um, when i started you know working the one thing that lacked for me was information i did not have a lot of information on what to do with the money that i earn and at that time i remember there was this company called girl boss uh, the ceo is i think sophia yeah. sophia or something and she uh, has been, had built like a very proactive you know platform for women which is basically what gate basis is doing right now and i think it's fantastic because uh, you can talk to women you can understand your financial needs and they help you and guide you in telling you what kind of investments is good for your portfolio and they help you diversify so they uh, i think it's best to not put all your money into one you know sort of a system like not just put in a bank account diversify do your little bit of gold little bit of mutual fund investment do a little bit of stocks if you're you know happy to do that i think this time um, because of the covid um, stocks have been rising and falling so it's yeah. been great fun to you know play with that and if you're interested it's very easy go to youtube google you get all the information there and there are so many apps you know like there's an app called spendy which i used to track my basic um, you know expenses so people can do that and people can yeah. track themselves but i think set your financial goals um i want a house in the next 5 years i want a car in the next one year and you know save to get the goal and make your goals achievable so i think yeah that be my sort of yarn to all the women out there <laughs> Sorry Mahima we lost you in the last couple of seconds so you said I want a house in the next 5 years I want a car in the next 3 years Yeah So yeah that those are my financial goals and those are goals that I have set for myself and you know uh, I want to achieve that and I'm saving for that goal right now and I think every woman should do that every woman should set their goals look back every 3 months to see that you know am i able to achieve those goals and, and can i increase yeah. my savings to achieve those goals yeah so i think uh, don't think about what other people want other people do 
what do you want and how you can achieve that would be the key i think great great um so i'm just going to quickly pause and check if anybody has any questions that they want to post in the comment boxes below and in the meanwhile you know what i want to know is you know from you um what are you looking forward to in 2020 uh, you know how are you keeping yourself occupied how are you keeping yourself um even healthy and you know just just channeling your energy from home at this point and you know what inspiration can you give to the peace community yeah so i think uh, i know it's really hard right now i get that you know sitting at home for like what we are i think around 30 we crossed 30 days now it's super hard but keep your mental health in check and um it's okay you know if you're just lazing around and if you're sleeping around it's okay i mean i've seen a lot of people you know stressing that i'm not able to achieve this i'm not able to you know do this do that it's okay if you're not able to do some things it's fine i think it's totally fine we're going through a really stressful time right now and you know to accept that is also another a uh, way of going through it and i think for me i've been very lucky because you know um, work has been extremely pumped up right now so i'm actually not getting a lot of free time so the one thing that was really you know worried about was my afternoon nap time when i come home that hasn't happened so i'm good <laughs> but yeah um i think just do it's fine to not like do something because you want to be lazy but try to do better things maybe get into more hobbies or you know do a little painting i think for me i am like an ocd freak so my favorite pastime is cleaning whoever wants to do that do that i make my entire house go crazy and cleaning like a crazy person right now so that's my hobby that makes me sane <laughs> yeah. yeah i can see your co-founder just meet saying writing in my notebook oh my god yeah just meet that just meet is like completely my opposite <laughs> He's a yep. guy. Yeah, I'm the. Most I'm sorry, Mahima. We lost you again for a couple of seconds there. You were talking about you and just me as co-founders and your your energies and strengths. Yeah, so Jasmeet and me are co-founders. We built the company together, and you know he is the creative CEO, the magnanimous founder with the fancy ass ideas, and I'm the more let's do this in a really smart way. Let's make an Excel sheet for it, and then discuss if it's plausible. So I think the combination really works for us, and because yeah, I'm like um, really strict, and he's like let's go party. So yeah, it's fun. I think it works for the company too because his ideas are fantastic, but you know we need to figure out if they can be executed. So good way to you know balance it out. No, that's great. That's great to hear that you know it's luck. You you got lucky on your journey yeah. to have the right co-founder. um and and just meet is you know he's loving the compliment <laughs> that you <laughs> give. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um mahima i want to thank you so much for your time i know it's a really busy really stressful time for you but you've made the time to speak to us and the basis community thank you so much uh, it's been a thank fantastic so time speaking to you and really wishing you the very best i know you know that kootloot is only going to go to strength from strength from here and uh, looking forward to seeing what this becomes in the next 3 to 5 years thank you so much for inviting me and great to be part of the get basis community and you know hope to grow together too and stay safe stay indoors and you know 